Hey, it's Mike here, and today, animal protein without animals, silk without silkworms, heme iron without animal blood, and honey without bees, even palm oil without creating deforestation or killing orangutans, and so on. And how this new food sector could very well be how the food supply shifts to vegan, or at least more vegan. We're gonna talk about what has already occurred, which is incredible, as well as this huge mounting momentum that we're seeing, especially this year. So we're gonna look at the technology behind all of these alternative proteins and other alternative nutrients, largely precision fermentation, but also some other methods. We'll learn how those work. We're not gonna particularly be talking about cultured meat other than an update at the end because there is some pretty incredible stuff happening there as well, so let's just go. So we have a pretty large umbrella of what can be considered alternative proteins, alternative fats, other alternative nutrients, but there's one that's really breaking away from the pack and does not have enough attention around it. People do not know enough about it, and of course that is that precision fermentation. So how does that vary from normal fermentation? What the heck is going on here? Well, from the Good Food Institute, who's supporting these alternative food methods, they break it down into three types. Of course, that traditional fermentation, we're talking about beer, wine, yogurt, cheese, and then we also have biomass fermentation, which uses the high protein content and rapid growth of microorganisms to efficiently make a large amount of protein rich foods. One product you may have heard of is corn and they are using filamentous fungi to grow protein quite quickly. Sometimes they have vegan options. I wish they were all vegan. Some contain egg whites though. Another type of biomass fermentation is air protein. I did an entire video on that and that is using particular types of bacteria to essentially create protein out of thin air using hydrogen as a fuel. This is a way that you can even skip plants getting protein just going directly to bacteria. So now those plants feel pain. People finally have an ethical way to eat protein. Oh wait, they never actually cared. It was just an excuse to eat animals. But that brings us to the final one, the main one here, and that is precision fermentation. And this is where we are taking microbes, whether they are yeast or bacteria, and doing some gene editing so that you can insert a gene to make a particular molecule and have it sort of just squirt it outside of its cell membrane. And then you can filter it out, skim it off the top, and then you have a, what would otherwise be a refined product that would be really inefficient, have a lot of byproducts, use more energy, etc. As they say, you can use this to make specific proteins, enzymes, flavor molecules, vitamins, pigments, and fats. So if what you wanna make is relatively simple, you can probably do it through precision fermentation. So oh yeah, ladies out there, you can probably precision ferment a man quite easily. <laughs> I'm starting a new company called Fermented. This is Todd, your new boyfriend, <laughs> okay. Stupid joke, let's keep going. And we're about to dive a little bit deeper into the history of this because it's fascinating. But first, I need to mention that, yes, I am still in Barcelona. And one of the cool things about being in Barcelona is I got to meet Helena, who has the passion project, precisionfermentationfood.com. Just major credit to Helena for doing a ton of research and helping out a lot with this video. And she pointed to the history of precision fermentation as a testament to you know, how people really are accepting of this technology in general. And that brings us to insulin. Now, when we first discovered insulin, we were extracting it directly from animals. I mean, originally it was from a dog in the first experiment and they described it as thick brown muck. We later started using cows and pigs to make insulin for diabetic people. And disturbingly, a kilogram of insulin required harvesting the pancreases of 50,000 cows and pigs, which is according to the FDA. But around 1980, we essentially programmed E. coli to create insulin for us through this fermentation process in large vats. And before we knew it, in the year 2000, 99% of all insulin that was used was from precision fermentation. And people weren't like, I don't want that. I want the animal insulin. No, give me the thick brown muck over here, which of course, it being thick brown muck shows that there was a lot more in it. I'm sure it was more refined past that, but even more modern animal-based insulin that we had led to allergic reactions, other dangers, which is just, a point for how much more pure this process is. And you might be thinking, that's pharmaceutical acceptance, whatever, that's completely different from food. Well, we have another great food example that was accepted, and that has to do with rennet in cheese making, and we're gonna cover what's going on in the dairy industry in a bit, which is huge. Rennet, which curdles the milk, separates the curd from the whey. And to precisionfermentationfood.com, historically, we obtained it in the form of paste by scraping the stomach linings of slaughtered, unweaned calves. But 
but in the 1990s, we edited the genes of microbes so that they could create rennet, and now, well, 80% of rennet is made this way. But fast forwarding a bit, many of you have probably had one of these products. If you're a vegan or vegan curious person, perhaps you tried the Impossible Burger at Burger King. Well, you had some precision fermented heme iron. Those are derived from soy root nodules and that creates that same bloody metallic flavor situation as actual animal flesh. So in that sense, it's already happening, but as of 2024, there's been somewhat of an explosion in investment. So it's really, really gonna happen now. Back to the Good Food Institute. We can see that in terms of total alternative protein in the first quarter of 2024, plant-based products raised about 60 million. Cultivated meats were just down at 12 million, but fermentation here is 228 million. We're talking biomass and precision fermentation combined. You can see that historically, plant-based proteins have gotten much more investment, twice as much as fermentation. Clearly that's changing. Real quick, let's look at three interesting things that are being precision fermented and then we'll hit on dairy because that's where I think the biggest change is. Well, the first interesting thing here is honey made this way. The company Malibio is making this bee-free honey and it is worth mentioning that bees are you know, invasive to North America. So they have started fermenting bee proteins as well as bee enzymes. And this is something that appears to be indistinguishable from actual honey because it has honey proteins. It's been used at 11 Madison Park in New York City, that three Michelin star vegan restaurant. I haven't heard any negative reviews about the taste and one taste test, which I found particularly wholesome, was from the YouTube channel, Beyond Food Market. Okay, let's go. Here it goes. The beast honeycomb, you can taste it. This is real honey. This is real honey. This is oh, real. Oh, this is delicious. <laughs> They nailed it. Oh yeah. So I'd be curious to try that for sure. And then the next one we have, which is interesting, is silk through precision fermentation. Many people aren't aware that the standard practice in the silk industry is to just boil thousands of silkworms alive from Discover Magazine. They say that each pound of silk uses like two to 3,000 silkworms. And this is also an insanely inefficient process. You gotta grow these little worms. You gotta you know, take the little worm outside of the little silk pouch, etc. But this way they could just mass produce the silk itself. And then another cool one here is they could do spider silk this way. And that is a notoriously strong material. So we could be using that without exploiting little spiders, which would be impossible anyway at this point, at scale at least. And then one that I think is really huge is alternative palm oil. And this is a case where, yeah, it's not an animal product, but the amount of animals that are harmed in palm oil production is quite high to the point where many vegans say, due to the orangutan deaths, the other deforestation deaths, I don't consider this vegan. No, and due to the damage, that's a valid concern. And at this point, it's a $70 billion industry. It's in the vast majority of processed foods. Like we need to replace this. And the company C16 Biosciences is doing just that. They're programming yeast to create fats and they can of course adjust the ratio to be exactly the same as palm oil. And speaking of little microbes, we can take a quick break with today's sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. This is a prebiotic and a probiotic. And this tiny little guy has 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains, which are scientifically shown to support various areas of health. We're talking gut barrier, gut immunity, overall digestive health, skin health, heart health, and more. And one thing I've learned from working with Seed, but I've never really talked about before, is the origins of Seed as a company and why they've made such a good product. And that is because they were scientists who were like, hey, we wanna fund more research but we need a way to do that. So these scientists got together and they created these products to do that. And so obviously these are scientists that are thinking about what is the best strain. They're not just looking for the most common, cheapest strains to throw in there. No, they're picking areas of health and throwing in strains that are particular to that. And then as I mentioned in the last segment on this, engineering the capsule to actually survive and get that bacteria where it's supposed to go. So that's why I think seed is better than other probiotics out there. And of course, part of the reason that Lenny and I have been taking seed since 2021. Anyway, if you would like to try it, you can click the link below and use the code Mike25 for 25% off your first month supply. All right, back to the bid.
All right, now let's get to the dairy industry because I'm quite sure that this is gonna kill at least a large portion of the dairy industry in a decade or so. And the first company that might come to mind, some of you might have tried Brave Robot ice cream. It uses precision fermented whey from the company Perfect Day. Imagine Dairy is also doing whey fermentation, but Perfect Day commissioned an independent report which passed some fancy ethical standards and, and found that it had a 96 to 99% lower water footprint and a 91 to 97% lower greenhouse gas footprint. And I'm quite sure that as more of these analyses are done, we're gonna see that over and over again for precision fermentation because it's precise. You're literally just focusing on what you actually want to make. No, you don't have to grow an entire cow. And from this 2021 report in the journal Industrial Biotechnology, this chart claims a 10 to 20 times feedstock efficiency for precision fermentation compared to cows, which is insane. We got all the feed required for these animals, water, fertilizer, etc., and then the product milk itself has to then be funneled down and processed in all sorts of ways to get something like whey protein. I just said all sorts of ways without even realizing I said whey. Anyway, we also, oh my God, I just said any way. <laughs> and this chart shows cost competitiveness for different industries for precision fermentation over time. It started out with you know pharmaceuticals reaching it, like insulin, as we talked about, and now food is officially happening. And get this, this chart essentially predicts the near end of dairy from cows by 2030. You know, maybe Maybe they jumped the gun a little bit, but still, major threat. And other companies like Change Foods are making casein, because apparently casein plays a huge role in the stretchiness of cheese, etc. So they're gonna use that for cow-free cheese. And at this point, some of you might be thinking, hey, aren't there some negative health reactions to these dairy proteins like casein, et cetera? And to that I say, uh, yeah, that would be essentially the same. You know, Maybe those are gonna be increasing IGF-1 more effectively than plant proteins as we've seen from studies in the past. But it's the case that milk itself also directly contains the hormone IGF-1 as well as other hormones. So you know, people who wanna be having an ice cream that has the exact same texture or also has casein or whey for whatever reason, they can get that and maybe be exposed to less hormones. <laughs> but then moving to big dairy itself, we can see some major change starting to happen here. It's worth mentioning that the business to business sales are 35% of the dairy industry. So if there's somebody who's like, I don't wanna be having any like fermented animal proteins or whatever, uh, they're not the ones who are gonna be buying it. It's gonna be businesses. They're gonna go for the cheapest option. And the massive corporation Nestle, who now owns Orgain essentially, has just released a animal-free whey protein powder. This is a literally a vegan whey, which is mind-blowing. And unfortunately, it's like twice the price of normal whey at this point. You know, it might be somewhat more comparable to organic or some special other way. But given that they're able to reach this price by making probably a very small quantity as they scale up, this could just get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And the fact that it's already not insanely higher than whey, which is mostly a byproduct of the cheese production, that's impressive. Anyway, so that's Nestle, which is one of the top largest dairy companies in the world, depending on the year. And then the fourth largest company is Danon, which is essentially starting a whole program to precision ferment various products. They've invested a ton of money into it, starting the facilities, etc. Oh, so this is huge. Way alone is a $20 billion industry. So there's a lot of room to make the money. But now real fast, I wanna talk about cultured meat. Just a quick update, cause it's wild, as well as just the overall change in public opinion around these types of alternative proteins. And starting right off, we have a fresh hot off the press study from just like two days ago. This one right here, which was able to produce some super cheap cultured chicken and project how cheap it can be, they say, that they were able to use an animal-free growth medium, which is awesome, that was only 63 cents per liter. That's also effective. And they say if this is scaled to 50,000 liters, they could be making chicken for $6 a pound. I mean, Whole Foods, chicken for rest, that's organic, is like $10 a pound. So yeah, animal agriculture is cooked, especially when you consider that the production time on this is just 20 days when you know, growing meat chickens is like 40 to 60 days, at which point then they're sending these animals off to the slaughterhouse to then be packaged, etc. So it's gonna be some quick chicken. I should also mention they've made other improvements, like they've now 
made it so the cells create their own signals to grow instead of having to put a ton of growth hormones in there separately. But with progress comes pee pee poo poo. I mean, <laughs> general resistance from various areas such as the meat industry and political actors. Yeah, George Monbiot recently covered in The Guardian a Greenpeace report that found a new campaign funded by the livestock industry and fronted by a former meat executive is pressing for an EU-wide ban. Uh, yeah, Italy has already been Banned it. The states, Alabama and Florida have also banned it. And this is from some cases like in Florida, just an overt allegiance between the meat industry and the politicians like Ron DeSantis. <clears throat> Sorry, I almost threw up saying his name. And public opinion is where we're also seeing a change. You know, we've seen a lot of people go, oh, that's gross. I would never eat it in the past, especially. And my response to that was always, hey, you know, we found out that that Subway chicken sandwich was only roughly 50% chicken, at least according to a report, and people kept eating it anyway. No one seemed to care, but we're seeing what appears to be an increase in the number of people that would accept actually consciously eating it. From a US survey, about 60% of the US population says that they would try it, and this goes up to two thirds of people when we're talking about chicken specifically. And that's important because chicken is the number one most consumed meat in the US and its consumption rate is growing the fastest of any meat. And Europe has yielded similar results. There was a YouGov survey that looked at 16,000 people across 15 countries and found that, yeah, about 60% of various countries approve of it entering the market, which is cool, with very similar percentages for how likely they would be to actually try eating it. And then in terms of precision fermentation and its public perception, I think it's pretty clear that people are accepting it. I mean, nobody's like, I don't eat cheese because 80% of it has fermented rennet in it. <laughs> like, no, no one cares. And if anything, I think if people are sold on how much more clean these products are, they don't require antibiotics, they have a lower footprint, etc., they would actually be encouraged to buy them instead. Now, people might say these fermented proteins or even these cultured meats are gross, they're made in a lab, etc. Well, to that I have to respond, the food that they are eating now is literally like slaughtered on a blood covered kill floor with little fecal matter and fecal dust, which I've talked about in the past and all that stuff that's really gross. And for some reason they're okay with it. But by contrast with precision fermentation, we're talking about large stainless steel vats that are highly monitored you know, and the microbes are filtered out, separated from the end product, etc. And for those people that are concerned about genetic modification, I know in the past I have been especially in terms of plants that are genetically modified to resist pesticides. We soak them in more pesticides and the weeds become Roundup resistant, etc. You know, that's not something that I'm happy about. Uh, but in this case, again, they are completely removing those microbes if you're concerned about something happening genetically to those microbes that you don't want to consume. And yeah, we have that age old concern of like, oh, well, it's not natural. Uh, well, how about the artificial insemination of virtually every animal that you've ever eaten, Wanda? That wasn't natural. And then the last point I wanna mention here, which is specifically to vegans, I don't think that vegans are that well educated on this topic. So much of it is new, so I understand, but I also think that this is just a great avenue to take animals out of the food supply. And so vegans should be pushing for this if I'm gonna be telling vegans what to do, you know, whether that's through educating people on this, investing directly, just supporting these companies in any way, because this literally is getting animals out of the food supply. We're just using some microbes, making the exact same products, especially when we're talking about whey and casein and you know silk, palm, oil, heme iron, it goes on and on, and who knows what we're gonna see in the next year or so too. Invest in Fermented Now, your fermented man companion. <clears throat> company. And it's also important to make a counter effort to straight up meat company funded anti alternative protein campaigns. That's huge. Anyway, if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, of course you can click that link below and use the code Mike25 for 25% off your first month's supply. And as usual, let me know down below what you think about this topic. You know, anytime we're talking about things that are new or grown in some sterile setting, people tend to resist it to an extent. Some people do. So let me know down below, do you support this? What are your concerns, etc. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.